we're going into a recession. It's just, you know, how sticky is it going to be in terms of when, when they can actually officially be called a, re a recession, but that'll also collapse velocity. And when you have collapse in velocity of money, you know, the uh, commodities start going down and we start to get some hits in commodities here to the downside. And in gold and silver and Bitcoin won't avoid it. They'll fall with it, but the general market will fall further. And then we'll just have to wait and see when the, um, when the powers that be panic and they start shoving hot money back into the system again to, uh, to create that velocity, to create the tax receipts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Bob Kudla, as always, going to give us a little bit of knowledge on the ideas of finance, economy, and society, and how will those twist together moving out. I'm here in Europe traveling right now. We have the uh, farmer strikes going on over here. Also, what's happening with the Chinese stock market? Any hope for that? You know, there's so many measures trying to be tossed in mixed in, but everything they've tried so far seems to just level down, not up in terms of quantifiables to bring that out of where they're, I don't know, they're going into some doldrums over there. And what's happened in the Red Sea? You know, Bob and I talked about this last time with the ships being rerouted around Africa. So what's going on there with the insurance costs, ships being sunk, larger missiles being used against the ships. And what's going to happen with the talking points for the future of 2024 in the World Economic Forum meetings. These all kind of twist and blend into each other. So, Bob, appreciate you joining me. The floor is yours. Yeah, you know, a lot of this stuff's actually time. But let's talk China first because um, they're pumping li liquidity into their economy again. So their stock market is going to get a bit of a bump, but it's going to just fade like every other uh, liquidity pump they put into the into their economy. Look, they're running into strategic issues right now, and you know they're losing uh, export market for the United States. Uh, Europe is getting worried. Uh, they they they're making a lot of enemies right now, and and the friends that they're they're associated with are uh, are not friends of the West. So I think China overall, you know, we talked about this a million times. I think they're dead men walking. And uh, it's just going to be just a matter of time. And as you obviously know, uh, the Taipei uh, uh, elections in Taiwan, um, they voted against the Chinese preferred candidate. So everybody's getting a little bit of a backbone. The Philippines are tying in tightly with the United States and Japan. You know, you have, um, uh, you know, South Korea and North Korea starting to get a little itchy there too. So basically the... The, 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 what they call the second ring that India prefers and the United States prefer is, is that ring is tightening around China. You know, you got India, you got Indonesia, you got the Philippines, you got South Korea, you got Taiwan, and you got Japan. And then obviously India anchors it on the uh, far western side that are creating a containment issue for China. So I think at some point... You know, China is going to keep drifting down, but short term, you know, a little bit of bump in the stock market last couple of days. It may last for a couple of weeks, but economically, no moss for China. Okay, so India is aligned with the BRICS. This place is not dead man walking over there. We got, you know, two people jumping on a trampoline trying to compete for uh, dollars or reserve currencies coming in here. Who's going to get the next uh, trade deal over there? So in when you're looking at the, the globe that seems so just scattered comparatively to what we used to know as stability during our lifetimes, I mean, how, how does somebody take advantage of that right now? Well, look, the dollar is the king and the dollar is going to remain the king. Short term, you could buy uh, some of the Chinese uh, large cap stocks short term, uh, but we're, we're the whole world is going to be sliding into a recession here. So, uh, United, in the United States, there's just too many um, macro data points that point to the only conclusion is going to be a slowdown sufficient enough to people will feel like a recession. And that then the uh, Federal Reserve is going to react to it. And then the uh, um, assets such as gold, silver, and Bitcoin will start getting a bit again. You know, Bitcoin had um, its run up into the halving. It's down nearly 20%. 
It's at some support areas now. It can drop down to 36, 37,000 too. So don't discount a bigger move down here. It was a pretty big run up, front running of the uh, ETF announcement. So now it's going to pull back. But also Bitcoin's a bit of a canary in a coal mine, and you're going to start seeing retrenchment in other asset classes. We just have too much debt, not enough income, and not enough activity velocity to be able to drive the economies forward without some sort of retrenchment. That's what's going to happen. So let me ask you about the velocity of money, because uh, you know I was looking at the CME dashboard where they were trying to forecast out rate cuts here or uh, rate increases in the percentage of, you know, you can see the, the charts moving down. It's like a 97% percentage chance that it will stay even or cut, you know, coming up in the next month or so. So what, what does this mean by the velocity of movement of monies and how does that tweak the economy or spur it or reduce it? Yeah, when more, when more money goes into the wealthy, velocity collapses because they don't need the money. Okay. Poor people will generate velocity until they reach their, their spending and, and debt level limits, which they've just reached. Okay. So the, so that's where we're, we're at right now. And, and, you know, politically here in the United States, bit of a stalemate. So you're not going to get any bigger oomph, if you will. And as people retrench, as the, as the employment rate starts to, to turn the other way, then people get defensive, people stop spending. So it'll collapse velocity. The other thing is collapse is bank credit. Bank credit is negative. Okay, federal tax receipts are negative. You know, uh, long-term jobs, uh, permanent jobs are, are negative. So all the things that you would look for sustainment of, of economic activity are going in the other direction. And so we're going into a recession. It's just you know, how sticky is it going to be in terms of when when's it going to actually officially be called a, re a recession, but that'll also collapse velocity. And when you have collapse in velocity of money, you know, the uh, commodities start going down and we start to get some hits in commodities here to the downside. And then gold and silver and Bitcoin won't avoid it. They'll fall with it, but the general market will fall further. And then we'll just have to wait and see when the, um, when the powers that be panic and they start shoving hot money back into the system again to uh, to create that velocity, to create the tax receipts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, then talk to me about everybody being stuck at the debt. Like you just said, the debt level has been reached for most consumers where they've matched their cards. You can't go any further. So what's what's the next step for a large percentage of the U.S. population? How does that work if they can't go further and they've hit the wall? Then what? That's a good leading question. They start defaulting on their debt, and then that that the risk gets transferred from the consumer to the banks, and you start seeing issues with that. So right now, the consumers are paying a higher percentage of of their income and interest payments than than uh, any time in history. So it's a, it's a big problem. And the only way out of it is default because they're not going to get out of it by income. I mean, you're, you're talking these 22, 29% interest rates. You know, it's absolutely ridiculous. I used to call that a loan shark, but uh, are you talking about shorting banks now because you think so much weight on that consumer debt is going to start taking down the banks? Or are you thinking about going short on banks? Is that Does that make sense or not? Yeah, I think it will once we start getting banks in the news again. But right now, the market's kind of in stasis there. They like the fact that the um, the longer rates are higher than the shorter rates. It gives them a natural, you know, positive flow to their, uh, you know, their borrowing and investing. So you have to start seeing the defaults start to manifest themselves. And then you'll see banks, uh, you know, they'll start to fall. And it's close. You know, you, you got the... You have to change to the tier capital and stuff like that. So uh, if that eventually helps gold and doesn't help, you know, banks with their debt. Banks have stopped stop lending, by the way. They, they obviously negative bank credit. The only money they're lending money to is the federal government. So Janet Yellen is, is basically hoovering up, hoovering up all available capital. And then when she can't hoover it up anymore, then the Federal Reserve is going to, is going to generate dollars and buy her debt. 
and then that's when things will will flip the other way. But you know, you really don't short banks or any of this stuff until you start seeing interest rates fall again. I mean, the uh, they start lowering interest rates, then you get what's called a bear steepening effect, and that'll be negative for banks because they won't be lending. The cost of borrowing goes up on them, and we, and we're going to see that. You know, when we had the big sell off in September and October, it's because the ten year yield was rising, and it's been rising since the beginning of the year. So we just have to get through some of these derivative flows, these option contracts that have been supporting the market. Once people start seeing that they can get, you know, five percent again on, 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 you know, seven to ten year money, or even less, they're going to lock it in. They're going to leave the stock market. And and then you're gonna you're gonna see a rollover in the markets. Yeah, well, that was kind of the contagion in the beginning. Was so much money was pulled out of what well, you consider the the banking system into that because they were offering such a much higher interest rate and instead of a quarter of a percent or something into five, and then it caused so much problem earlier. So you're telling me it's like a 2.0 with another lockup coming in, and then a lot of the money that's intertwined between China and the United States is now somewhere derivative tripping over across China and Hong Kong. I mean, what th this is far wider than just something happening in the United States. Is, am I, am I seeing that correctly out on the, on the chessboard here? Yeah. The stronger the dollar is, the, the more likely it's going to cause some sort of accident in, in another uh, part of the world, because a lot of people, you know, they like to, um, either match the dollar, you know, a, you know, dollar, um, you know, like a peg, like Hong Kong had that before they got absorbed by China, you know, but at some point they can't do that. And when, it, and for a while there, they can lower their currencies against the dollar because it helps their export markets. But then you get a point where it gets too expensive to import, you know, so you're going to have some of these countries that really, if you look, if you can't generate your own energy, you can't generate your own food supply, you know, you're a vassal or a failed state. And so, you know, that stuff, we're causing dislocations, like more like what you saw with the Arab Spring. You know, this one's going to be a global winter because you're going to see, you know, basically currencies crack. And I'm not talking about Tunisia. You know, I'm talking about, you know, c countries in, 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 uh, in Asia and, you know, Russia's in good shape, actually. Um, but like, you know, Brazil's in good shape, but India's not as in good shape, you know, because they have to import food and they got to import energy. China's not in good shape because they have to import food, they got to import energy, and they're losing their export markets. So we're going to see a mistake of that kind of magnitude, you know, and, and then you can see in the political environment here, you got Poland, you got uh, Netherlands, you got Argentina, you know, there's a big shift to the right again. And that's usually deflationary, too, because Democrats like to spend more money than Republicans do. So, so Dave, I think the next two months are going to be really interesting in the stock market. I think we're going to see a pretty good pullback with that divergences. <clears throat> There's going to be some tremendous opportunities in, in terms of trading. I extended the, um, the program with the discounts on your channel go to that landing page but if you come to our page at tradelikeagenius.com make sure you you, uh, you tell them you came from adapt 2030 uh the podcast here so that i can apply the right discounts for you volatility gives people tremendous opportunity and i think there's going to be a pretty good dip in the market you know historically these kind of setups provide for like a 10 percent pullback and then and then i think the government's going to start to panic and then it'll be be a good time for commodity trading, you know, back into Bitcoin, back into gold, back into silver, back into energy will be the plays that I'll be looking for going into April. So you think 10 percent, you think 10 percent is the, the the final drop on that? Not the final drop. This will be the drop for spring. You know, spring. in the past, in the past, when the market is making new highs, but the but the McClellan oscillator is in negative rate where it is right now. You you typically roll over because it just you just run out of you run out of good companies to buy and the just the weight of the market and the weight of profit taking uh, brings everything down. So that's what you have in the forecast here. Wow, rosy spring coming up. But remember, you can take advantage of that, and I don't mean take advantage in a greedy way, but 
be able to make money from that, help others, help yourself get ready for these changes. Because what we're seeing right now is a, a like a very small amount of change in terms of what is forecast for greater changes coming through the rest of this year and into 2025. So, but really how far do you think the market might fall? So if it's 10% in the spring, like walk us out through a year, year and a half from now, what are we looking at the ultimate bottom minus how many percent based on historical averages or historical cycles through the last 150 years? Uh, well, probably, you know, there's a, there's a decent chance depending on how much money they throw in the system to make another high, higher high after this cycle. But then after that, you're looking at probably a 45 to 50% sell off in the markets because the, basically they'll be running out of ammunition and, and basically nature has to take its course. And you're going to get a lot of basically clearing of the brush and you're going to see a 50% correction. <clears throat> I think that happens. That that process starts in 24. And I think all of 2025 is going to be pretty brutal. And what kind of signal do you have that we've reached the bottom that, you know, we're coming off the bottom and then back out again? You, you start running out of what, what they call uh, new lows. And then you just know that it's basically exhausted itself. But just to be clear, because I, you know, I talk to a lot of different people is that we're expecting a weakness in the spring. We're, we're looking for the intervention in, in, in spring and summer. And then we're looking for the market to actually start selling in the fall again and make a lower low than what I think we're going to hit in the spring. And eventually, you know, we, sh we can come all the way back down to, uh, you know, 2,900 to 3,300 on, on, uh, uh, on the S and P 500. So <clears throat> it'd be pretty scary. But there are ways to make money when the market's going down, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, look at Bitcoin went down 20%. We did three BITI trades and, uh, so you can hedge that way. And if the market falls, there's stocks like SARK, NVDS, these are ETFs you can buy. And then there's leveraged ETFs you can buy as well. You know, if you want to short the banks, there's a, you know, FAZ. You know, you want to short the small caps, there's TZA, you know. So does it, you know, you want to short the NASDAQ big boys, there's, you know, SQQQ. So all depend on what's going to break when you, you apply, there's trades you can apply on the short side to uh, any market sector out there. But there are like ETFs that trade on markets that are reversing and going in the downward direction. Is that right? That's right. And then, you know, if you want to just play it safer, you can just buy the long bond. Eventually, people will move into the long bond. So it'll sell off first and then, and then people will panic and they'll, they'll do a flight to safety. And so there's trades there. And you can short the bond. So you can do a – I do a trade all the time between TLT and TBT – just going back and forth. You can do the same with Bitcoin, BITI, BITO. You know, you can do that with small caps, TZA, TNA. So you, you just could just, you know, basically yin and yang these these um, these moves because it's not going to go straight down, and but it will be violent as it goes down. So it, it, the markets will become trickier. But the volatility tends to be good for traders if you're open-minded and you just follow the signals. And the way our, we trade, we trade with algorithms anyway. So it'll tell us, you know, what the price action is telling us is that this is a high probability, you know, trade to set up for long or short. And you just ignore the news, the, you know, the, the, the noise, and you just trade the signal. And you're going to be, you're going to be more right than wrong. And you're going to make more money when you win than when you lose money when you lose. So it's just a really good long-term ability to generate wealth, and we give you access to that. Because it does seem that in a, they, they say that a rising tide, you know, raises all ships. But in the same thing, a, a tide going out, you know, all ships will go down with that tide. So it doesn't matter what it is from the bonds to the currencies, to the commodities, to the equities, whatever, even real estate, everything will drop but it shall rise and drop again a few times like the tides coming in and out tremendous opportunity to grab that couple percent each way up and down, up and down and up and down. I think you outlined that pretty clearly. And Bob, I appreciate you having 
your time to spend with me today because I'm always trying to figure out what's happening next here in these timelines because, you know, a year ago it seemed pretty clear, but, you know, now looking out deeper into the fog, it seems like, well, there's a few more problems that were anticipated because of this monetary policy and how much money printing there was and a few debacles in the shipping routes and everything. So I don't know, it just suddenly spun on a dime. The more they intervene, the worse it's going to eventually be. And then we just don't know. We just don't know geopolitically. Um, you know, all bets are off if something happens that can't be contained quickly by the bankers. So, so that's kind of our view right now. Always opportunities. You just have to be open-minded. And you know, if 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 the world is not adapting to your narrative, you change your 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 trading, and just follow the money, and you'll do just fine. But with that, wow. Dave, I got to run. I know you got to run. You come over to my site by accident. Just do tradelikeagenius.com. But make sure you, you tell us that you came from Adapt 2030 so we can take care of you. Remember, there's no accidents. We're here on purpose anyway. Bye for now. And thanks, Bob. Thanks, Dave. I'll see you later. Have a safe trip. Ciao.